All right, so it is like one of the best known things, if you pay attention to the weather, that the storms come from the west and they go to the east. The question is, what the devil is going on? Why does that happen? If you look at explanations online, what you'll usually see is two ridiculously bad explanations. One of them has to do with all of these cells, like the Hadley cell and the feral cell, and you just look at this and you want to vomit because... Wow! If you look at this right now and you're like, oh, I totally understand that. That makes perfect sense. Great. Stop watching this video, please. And then the other explanation that you'll hear, oh, it has to do with the Coriolis effect. If you know and can actually explain to a child, or if you are a child to yourself or your sibling, what the Coriolis effect, sometimes terribly called the Coriolis force, oh, terrible, is, then stop watching this video. This video is not for you, congratulations, you win. Okay, what I wanna suggest is that you can understand why the weather comes from the west and goes toward the east in most parts of the world, if you have most parts of the world that you're probably listening to this from, let's be clear about that, though also the highest population. If you just understand not cells, but fountains, and not the quote-unquote Coriolis effect, but shooting and missing because your bullet keeps veering off to the right. What are we talking about? Okay, let's talk, let's talk about this. So the most basic thing that you need to understand about wind is that wind is not caused by trees sneezing. Wind is caused by hot ground shaking, because that's what it means to be hot, shaking really, really hard, and bumping up the air above it, whee, into this fountain. And then the air goes above the rest of the sky and flies over there. We say that hot air rises, and that gets at it. But this is a better model for understanding what's really going on. Uh, it just bumps it up. It, it splashes it up. So whenever you see something warm, what you should imagine it is, an, is an invisible fountain that is above that. Then it splashes down on the cold air that has not been you know, smashed up and knocked upwards, and it squishes that down. And then at the bottom, at the ground level, the bottom of this ocean of air, we feel the wind. That is what the wind is. Okay, so take this, extrapolate this to the entirety of the world. We have one part of the world, the middle, the equator, that's really, really warm. So what should happen is that the air from above our uh, above the equator should be kicked up really high in this giant worldwide fountain, and it should splash down where? At the poles. We wouldn't know about that because it's happening above the sky, right? I guess it kind of is the sky, but what have you. And then where should it go? What should, where should we feel it? We should feel it as it then rushes down back from the poles back to the equator. I shouldn't even say down there, right? But you'd feel the wind if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, and I'm going to assume that you live in the Northern Hemisphere from this because 90% of human beings live in the Northern Hemisphere. You would feel the wind always going south. But wait a second, that's not where the wind comes from, right? The wind, we said, comes from the west and it goes toward the east. What the heck is going on? Okay, so a couple things with this. One of them is that... um. I'm going to show you, so that's the not cells, but rather fountains, frankly, if you, let me just show you that, if you memorize, if you try to memorize all the cells, they get so complicated, there are six of them, the order seems haphazard, what the heck is going on, but if you instead imagine around the earth, they're just being two fountains, sorry, three fountains, one, and yeah, just a second, let me show you this, this is the picture that Matt, that explains everything. So there's a fountain at the equator. Whee! It's spraying up the air. There's weirdly another fountain that is at the Alaska, at the 60th latitude north, and then the 60th latitude south, the sort of anti-Alaska. That's weirder. You can understand that if you understand everything else. But there's two big sprays going on there. And the air falls down, falls down, and where that air meets is weirdly at the Florida line, at about 30 degrees north latitude. Sprays down there, and then the air wants to get to the bottom of the fountains. So, air that splashes down south of that line is mostly going to go and try to get back down to the equator, so it's going to go in south. And then air that splashes a little bit north of that is going to be trying to get back to Alaska and is going to be going north. Does this make sense so far? It's really, really weird. Okay, but that's where, and I guess south here would be the idea. Okay, but that, in fact, as we said, is not actually what happens. Really, the wind goes to the east. Um, what should we look at? We should look at the fact that it's a bit more complicated than that. In fact, 
that if you live in this part of the earth, the wind goes to the east. Also, this part of the earth, it goes to the east. But right north of the equator, it actually goes to the west. And by the North Pole, it goes to the west. Really far down here, it goes to the west. It alternates back and forth. So this is really weird when you try to explain why the heck this is happening. Here is where it is really helpful to understand what I did for a job when I was in college. Some fools paid me a lot of money to run around and shoot people with Nerf darts. This didn't happen. I, I lied to the children when I told them this because that's just how I, you know, get my kicks. But I got this dream job of doing this. And what I would find is that people would be really unhappy <laughs> when I did this. So what I would do is I would, so they wouldn't get a chance to, you know, run me down and shoot me or something. I would drive past their house at 100 miles an hour, and then as soon as I got opposite their front door, fire the dart and goes boop, and then I would not even slow the car down, I would keep going on, right? Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. Why doesn't it? Maybe you can intuit this. The fact is that when you fire that Nerf dart, that Nerf gun, the Nerf dart, is still going 100 miles an hour to the east. So if I shot it right here, it would not, it would not actually hit the door. Instead, similar to the car, the dart would keep going north. And where it would actually hit would be something like my next door neighbor's house. This is actually a picture of my house when I lived in Tempe, Arizona. Um... Yeah, does that idea make sense? So you shoot it over here, but because it's moving, you sorry, you try to angle it so it's looking like it's going to go there, but in reality it goes in that direction. Why? Because you were already moving at a hundred miles. Oops, I can write down. I can't apparently write things down. Imagine that it says a hundred miles an hour to the east of that. Why am I talking about this? Because right now you never think of it. We make fun of people who are flat earthers, but we all go on and we imagine the world is actually a flat disk and it's not spinning at all. It turns out that the earth is not that. What's really going on is that you are moving really quickly right now. Where, how fast you are moving depends on where you are. So if you're at the equator, you're going about a thousand miles per hour. If you're in Florida, or that the 60, Arizona, Texas, a uh, bit south of Southern California, you're going actually still 900 miles an hour. If you're up by Alaska, you're going 500 miles an hour. Okay, so here's the amazing thing. I want you to imagine that you are in Florida and you are trying to shoot me and I am in Alaska. Heck, let's say that you're not trying to shoot me. You're trying to, let's, trying to say, let's imagine you're trying to save me Rah! from this really well drawn polar bear trying to there and there right there trying to shoot me you like have the bear in your sights right so you're trying to shoot it straight north and you fire a bullet or a nerf dart or what have you are you going to be able to hit that bear i'm not generally in favor of shooting polar bears fyi but it's gonna kill me save me save me okay what's gonna happen we never think about it but if you're facing north and you shoot a gun you're going to the east, you're going to the right, and also your bullet is going really fast to the right. So that bullet is going to go to the right a little bit, in fact, not just a little bit, it's going to go right at 900 flipping miles an hour, right? Here's the interesting thing. At first, the ground underneath it is going 900 miles an hour to the, to the east as well. So there's not going to be a difference. It's going to look like yeah, it's going to be going straight over the ground. However, the farther north you get, the slower the ground is going to be going to the right. And so imagine that you are, I don't know, riding on that bullet or something. You think you're going to go in this path. And actually, if you close your eyes and you open up and think, okay, I'm going to be right about here. But you're not over there. You're actually over here. And you're like, oh, that's weird. Oh, that's right. Because I'm going 900 miles an hour to the east. And I forgot about that. Okay, and this is only going like 850. Okay. But I guess I'll stay like really close to there, right? Oh, the problem is the farther north that you go, the faster you are moving to the right compared to the ground underneath you. Because the farther you go up north, the slower the ground is moving to the right. So the more that you go farther north, more th the farther you go north, the more your bullet shoo, is going to skew off to the side. What does this mean? This means that the air that starts at Florida trying to get to Alaska actually overshoots. Is that the right phrase for that? I feel like it's maybe not. I can probably improve that, and goes off to the right, and get ready for it, 
gesture controls, this thing that you can hear. It's the same dealio with the other side because you're shooting to the south. Now you're shooting at something that's going to heck of a lot faster than you, right? Here's the Jaguar, right? That's like ocean. Here's a Jaguar right here and you're trying to shoot it from here. But the Jaguar is going way faster here than you are over here. So your bullet is going to look like it's going off to the right again. In the northern hemisphere, whatever direction you turn it and shoot, you are always going to, it's always going to seem like your bullet's going to veer to the right. Isn't that weird? It's so bizarre. So, you try to shoot this way, but your bullet's going to veer off this way. So winds in these parts of the world will always go in these sorts of directions. This explains neatly why it is that the wind in this part of the world comes from the west and goes to the east. Why wind in this part of the world comes from the east and goes to the west. Think hurricanes, actually, for that matter. Um, if you actually trace this into how storms work, you will also be able to make sense of why it is that storms spin clockwise in one hemisphere and counterclockwise in another hemisphere. The answer to all of this does not have anything to do, no, it has everything to do with cells, except instead of cells, what you should be thinking about is fountains, right? Basically, there's a fountain right here, and there's a fountain right here, and a fountain right here. Yeah, I did that right. A fountain right here. If you take that and then it splashes down, if you take that fountain metaphor rather than the stupid cells metaphor, you can, you can understand everything so much more easily. And the stupid Coriolis effect. This is effects. An effect literally cannot cause anything. Effects are not causes. <laughs> They are a description of a situation going on. This is a crap explanation. You can get rid of those and what you can understand for why does the wind actually come, why does the wind usually blow to the east, come from the west? The answer is air splashes down by Florida, which kicks it east. It blows north to Alaska to fill up the bottom of that fountain, which is so slow, so the wind overshoots and goes to the east. The next time that you go outside, look at which direction the wind is blowing to and imagine where that wind has been because wind is epic. Thanks.